just going to play a song or two. Um, I don't, I can't see the um, phone, um, the messages that you're writing, so I'm not sure if anyone's out there. So I'm going to play a few songs. And then um, I wrote a story this morning, uh, one of my letters about Mama and um, when I was a little girl. And I thought I'd read it to you after I sing a few songs. So um, here's one that you'll know. Happy Easter. If you don't mind the low seam and if you don't mind the dark, if you don't mind the black face that is every miner's mark, you can make a fortune and you can buy a dream. Go cruising in a Chevy with the Tazewell Beauty Queen. If you don't mind the short fuse and if you don't mind the smell, if you don't mind a summer in a place as black as hell, you can make a fortune and you can buy a dream. Go cruising you're just joining me. I just decided to say hello this Easter. Um, it's evening here in England, in Carnforth, in Lancashire, where I am. And I tried to choose a time where people would be up and about over um, in the United States as well, um, back where I'm from. And maybe even Aunt Edith and Cousin Charmin and Mama and Aunt Bonnie and Rachel and everybody uh, in the family, my mom and my sister, maybe they'll all be happen to be on Facebook right now. Um, so I'm just going to slip around and see if anybody's out there. <laughs> oh, hey. Hey, I'm so happy. Thank you for, um, hey, Jeannie. Hey, Hillary. Oh, and Oh, William. Oh, and Lindsay. Hey, Lindsay. Well, I'm going to sing another song. I know people can watch this later as well, so I'm going to say hello to you too if you find this sometime today on your Easter day. 
because it's only about nine o'clock in the morning on the west coast and obviously if I've caught you in the middle of something and you've just popped in and you've got to go if you've got Louie with you Hillary and you need to go or Eve and you've got children to tend to um, grandchildren then you know this will be here for you later um, since I've been thinking about the mountain this morning um, I thought I would sing Polishing Stars I hope that if you know this song you'll sing with me in your kitchen or your living room Mama she told me when she was a really really good to sing for you and with you too I hope um, I miss everyone and I miss all the hugs especially all the hugging and um, like I said I, I woke up this morning with um, a story in my mind about when I was a kid and um, Easter so the idea was um, I wanted to read that to you so 
I hope you'll indulge me and listen to my story. I have it right here. Before I start, I'm just going to check in and see who else is here. Sorry about getting up and down all the time. Oh, hi, Gail. Happy, happy Easter to you and Constance. And oh, thank you. Well, I know that um, I know that you'll be able to look back at this if you have a quiet moment because I don't know where um, where you are in your day today. Um, you might be busy making something. You might have oil paints out or you might have uh, bread that needs to go in the oven. And so um, I'm going to make this video available for later um, as well in case you don't have time to listen to a story right now, but you think you might like to listen to one later. So I hope that everybody can hear me all right. Um, this is the first time I've done this uh, live thing, but I just wanted to say hello because I missed everyone. So um, here's a story about this, this little bunny. I call it Easter and Jingle Bells in my crinolines. This week, when the Englishman came back from the grocery store, he brought me a dark chocolate bunny wrapped in gold foil, which reminded me of growing up when mom would make our Easter baskets. While we were asleep, she would ferret out our pink and purple baskets with the day glow plastic grass in a Ziploc baggie from the year before. And she'd fill them with the Easter eggs we dyed, lots of chocolate and a little stuffed animal or a pretty toy. The chocolate bunny was always the grand centerpiece of our baskets, and sometimes I saved mine for so long admiring the brightly decorated foil that when I finally unwrapped it months later, the chocolate had gone all white, chalky, and inedible. Did this happen to you too? It took me many years to make myself open the chocolate bunny before it went chalky, chalky or cankerized, as we say, up in Southwest Virginia. But the handy thing about the gold foil wrapped chocolate bunny that the Englishman brought to me is that it has a little brown ribbon and a jingle bell around its neck. Now this makes the opening and eating of the chocolate bunny a bit easier because in a sense, I still have a souvenir, a sort of relic if you want to be Catholic of it, about it, of the bunny. That makes me think of Gail Gibson. <laughs> I studied Catholic relics with her. So that bell is like a, a little relic that I get to keep from the bunny. And that is a great relief, this little relic on the bunny, for a person who has spent many years of her life saving things for good. Another Southwest Virginia expression, which covers all of the gift boxes of perfume or lotion saved for good until they turn to alcohol before you can use them or the little soaps shaped like pigs or cupids, which are never used for washing, but slowly desiccate until one day you open their gift box to see they've turned to dust, like the Ten Commandments in the Ark of the Covenant. This is an inherited neurosis with clear evidence in the shape of shoes and jewelry never worn and embroidered pillowcases and tablecloths never used by my great grandmother because she was saving them for good We've had a bit of a global discussion about this tendency among several generations of the Smith women of my family and have decided in recent years to use all of the things that we have been saving for good. This has taken a great effort of will and I suspect we are still keeping a certain number of handkerchiefs and fresh boxes of crayons in reserve just out of respect for our elders who saved things for good. Now my current chocolate bunny presents none of the emotional conundrums because he comes with his tiny tinkling bell on a ribbon to remind me of his cuteness when he's gone and eaten. And this bell also reminds me of Jewel Ridge and the women of my family because every Easter my sister and I received a brand new dress. This was a great source of excitement and trepidation because it meant something new and pretty, but there was also the risk that the Easter dress and the attendant tights and cardigans would be so itchy that we would feel 
like there were a dozen biting ants crawling all over our skin while we patiently absorbed the Easter church service of the Scottish Presbyterian Church in Brookline, Massachusetts. Easter always fell during the school year, so we weren't up on the mountain with Mom all to have church, but in Boston with Mom and Dad, where our Easter dresses would be sadly covered by our winter coats, hats, gloves, scarves, galoshes, and where we'd sit with the tartan-clad Scottish Presbyterian ladies who bought, brought a perfume of steaming mothballs into the sanctuary. Since Mama missed us especially at Easter, and she was proud of Dad for being the assistant minister at the Presbyterian Church, she would always send Mom and Dad the money for our Easter dresses. There were many burning questions I held in my mind when the time came to get our Easter dresses. Would Mom let us choose the one we wanted? Would we have to wear a sweater with it in Boston? Yes, definitely. Would it be scratchy? Probably. And if so, would the scratchiness be worth it considering how pretty it was? But most of all, I wanted to know if it would have a jingle bell sewn into the crinoline. Yes, that's right, a jingle bell. Now you may ask what a jingle bell sewn into your crinoline has to do with Easter. And all I can say is that I'm looking at a chocolate Easter bunny made in France, bought in a small town in Lancashire, England, with a jingle bell around its neck. Jingle bells and Easter. My sister and I always looked for a jingle bell in our dresses because one of the earliest Easter dresses I can remember Mama buying for us when we were very little had several jingle bells sewn into the crinoline. I'm not sure that any future Easter dresses we found in Boston had jingle bells sewn into them. I know we asked mom to put jingle bells in them with mixed success. After all, a jingle bell was not a great way to maintain silence in a child sitting on a pew in a church in potentially scratchy dresses during a long Easter service. But when I cast my mind over these jingle bells in my crinoline, I'm reminded of the month I spent in Japan after college when I went to the Shinto shrines in Tokyo. I was struck by the way that the Japanese people would clap their hands twice with purpose to get the God's attention and to show their gratitude and joy for the God's help in their lives. They were literally saying to their wandering gods, the spirit, the kami, the ancestors, we are here and we've come to speak with you. And in the end, this was the great gift of Luther and Calvin, the idea the belief that we could speak directly to God without the go-between of priests and priestly hierarchies. In Southwest Virginia, at the Friendly Chapel Church up on Smith Ridge, people speak right out to God with their hands in the air saying, Sweet Jesus, we love you, Jesus. And when Uncle Jerry, my Uncle Jerry, was alive and the preacher there, he would often say as he was beginning a prayer, God, we are calling on you today to hear our prayers. We are calling on you today. I must have had Uncle Jerry in my mind when I wrote The Hoot Owl, which begins, Oh Jesus, this is Janie Hay calling to you now. I need for you to hear me, so I'm praying right out loud. The little jingle bell in my crinoline seemed to say, Hello God, it's Easter and we are here, present and accounted for to celebrate this day with you. We are here to make a joyful sound. That little jingle bell is not so different than the Carillion bells ringing across England on any normal Sunday, or the bell the Hindu devotee rings on entering the temple sanctum to announce her presence. The jingle bell in my crinoline was like the sanctus bell of the Catholic priest, rung just before he lifted Christ's body into the air in the form of a wafer. With my jingle bell, I was like Moses' brother Aaron with his bells and pomegranates, pomegranates, sewn round the hem of his priestly robe. Aaron was meant to wear this robe when he went about preaching. Quote from Exodus, so the sound of the bells will be heard when he enters the holy place before the Lord and when he comes out. Most of all, my little jingle bell reminded me of my own child self, of my movement and aliveness in the world on Easter day. But this Easter, 
Mama won't be walking the 30 yards up and across the road to the Friendly Chapel Church. It will be the first time in her lifetime that she's not been in church on Easter Day, and this will be true for many people across the world. This past week, my Jewish friends celebrated Passover alone or with a few loved ones with whom they live rather than gathering many around their tables as they've done every year. This year, because of coronavirus, we must all look for small signs and listen for the ringing of small sounds. I watch as my neighbor across the street adds hand felted hearts to her window and then on another day she adds decorations from her husband's birthday cake. I look for her little signs. We exchange compliments on our windows across our street every Thursday when we stand in our doorways at 8 o'clock to applaud our health workers. Yesterday I put a new bear in my studio window because I know she is looking for a sign from me too. We are not just decorating our windows, we are ringing a kind of bell to say we are here. We are still here. Each day the Englishman and I walk or cycle down to the River Keir near our home in Carnforth, North Lancashire, and we first stop to look for two rabbits who live on a particular spot on the bank, and then we feed fresh grass to the horses who live further along that road, and finally we stand by the gate to watch the spring lambs leaping in the sunlight. We listen to the sound their mothers make as they tear at the grass with their teeth. We hear the lambs crying, we hear their mothers answer, and we watch as they run toward her for another bit of milk. Where are you, mother? I am here. Where are you, Lord? I am here. The sixth story of John chapter 20. We are always looking for signs, whether plant or animal, to feel the sun in the soil, to feel the presence of our neighbor, mother, or God. When Mary Magdalene came upon Jesus, John tells us after he'd left the tomb, she thought he was a gardener. He asked her who she was searching for, and when she said she was looking for Jesus, that man from the tomb, he said her name, Mary. And she knew that he was no usual gardener. Sometimes we just need to hear our name, don't we? A sign that our presence, that our arrival is felt. I love when the big, big brown mare comes to the fence along the river Keir to eat grass from my hand. I can feel the heat of the sun on her neck. I like to think she looks for me too. And if she knows not my name exactly, but she knows my smell, my sound, the certain jingle, if you will, that I make. It's a terrible, terrible time right now. A world of people are dying. A world of people are grieving, and a world of people are lonely and living in fear. We could all use a sign, a spark, a green shoot, a call from the wilderness, or the small jingle of a bell to remind us of the presence of our own selves, of our movement and aliveness, to remind us that we are still here and we must do our most to stay alive, to stay here, to be here, and to help others stay alive and be here too. I think I will sell this new little jingle bell into one of my summer dresses so that many months from now, when I put it on, when I put that dress on, I will remember this gray and overcast Easter where no stone was rolled away where no grand gatherings occurred, where no bold gestures were made, but there was the small sound of a tinkling bell around the neck of my chocolate Easter bunny, which took me back to the plastic Easter baskets with mom, dad, and Sarah, and the steamy mothball smell of Scottish Presbyterian Church in Boston, and the voice of mama on the long distance telephone asking me what kind of dress I got for Easter and did it have any jingle bells in the crinoline. So I hope you enjoyed that. I loved reading it for you and um, so 
sorry about stumbling a little bit. It's only the second time I've read it through. I admit I took a nap this afternoon, so I wouldn't look so tired <laughs> when I when I came to see you here. And uh, that's just because I woke up at 5 o'clock with the idea of this story in my mind. And so I was a bit tired when 2 o'clock came around. I'm just going gonna, gonna to sing another song or two for you before I go. I'm going to go ahead and and let you go soon. I know people have lots of things to do and there's all kinds of people on the on the internet um, sharing and giving uh, music and, and art and all kinds of things. But I just want to see who's out there and say hello if I can. Um, oh, hey Debbie and Sue. Hey Sue and Hugh. Oh, and Shelly. Oh, Shelly used to sell, sell me records. Um, back in uh, in Pennsylvania, and Greg, hey Greg, and Rosie, all oh, Julie, hey Julie, and Colin, oh, that is so. Thank you, Gail. Yes, we need some more jingle bells in our crinolines for sure. And thank you for Camilla. Thank you for being there too. Um, oh, it's so nice to know that you've been here. And I will check back throughout the day. You'll be able to share this video if you want. Um, just if you liked the essay or you want it, uh, people to have a chance to hear me sing, which, what, what, for whatever reason. <laughs> um, and once it's finished, you should be able to share it. And, um, and I will also uh, send this story to my, um, I'll send it to my newsletter and I'll, and I'll try to put this on YouTube as well, only because not everyone is on Facebook and, um, you know. So, here's a song from my, from my new record. Not all of you may have heard that record yet, but it's got a song on it called Friendship. And um, we have a channel over here in, in England called Talking Pictures, which shows bunches and bunches of old movies and uh, old television shows. And one of the shows that they showed was from the, from the 60s. Um, that's and it starred Herbert Long. It was called The Human Jungle, and they rerun it every once in a while. And it was an early show about psychology and psychiatrists. Um, so they dealt with all kinds of new subjects that hadn't been addressed on television before. But one of the most surprising and amusing things was when Dr. Uh, Quarter, who is Herbert Long's character, is talking to his assistant, Dr. Davis, and they're discussing a patient and about how they could persuade that patient possibly to be more open with information about themselves that could help them to make that person better. And Dr. Quarter says, I wonder if this might be time to use the LSD. <laughs> and I thought, what? <laughs> so the LSD shows up in this song um, because of Dr. Quarter, as does the ESP, because when I was a kid I always wanted to have extrasensory perception, and I think my mother probably does, um, because every time I, headache, I have a headache, she texts me and says, Honey, do you have a headache? <laughs> because she gets one too. We're connected like that. Um, it has all kinds of things that have sort of gone by the wayside. I suppose in a way like jingle bells and crinolines have, and um, maybe it's time that we brought them back, singing telegrams. Oh, well, how great it would have been to be a singing telegram delivery person. I would have loved that. I could have had a great costume. Oh, yeah. Um, so, friendship. Not just about friendship, but about all the things that we sort of lose over time, like our jingle bells. And maybe we need to go get those jingle bells and sew them right into our hem. Whatever happened in can and string Always said you could give me a ring String seems broken, I don't hear a thing Got no connection to can and string Whatever happened to the old seashell Always said you could give me a bell When I listen to the ocean swell Friendship. Like
song for you and um, and then I'll hope to see you on here again I've, I've actually really enjoyed this and it's it's made me feel so happy uh, to see your names popping up and even if you could only stay for a moment it's so nice to say see that you you came in uh, just for that time to say hello hello I'm here just like that jingle bell and that's the most important thing I'm, I'm really glad to know that you are there I'm here too and um, if there's a particular song, you know, I might try this again next Sunday. So if there's a particular song you would like for me to sing, uh, hopefully one of my songs or a Jenny and Billy song, um, I will do my best to practice it up this week. Or if I've written a story in the past and uh, you've read it, one of my essays, and you'd like to hear me read that, um, I might be able to do that. So. Um, I'd love to hear from you or you know absolutely no pressure and uh, there are some great videos out there right now I'd like to just flag up a couple of them one is my friend uh, Sue Griffiths Knowlton who is uh, playing Arkansas Traveler on the banjo and it sounds so good and her Bart Ryder banjo sounds terrific uh, I love his banjos, so there's a great video to watch if you just feel like listening to a bit of instrumental music or you'd like to get some banjo inspiration. And you can also look for Matt Kinman, M-A-T-T-K-I-N-M-A-N, -T -T Matt Kinman, who is one of the best traditional singers living today. Um, and he has just put up a video recently. He had a lot of technical problems at the front of it and the great thing about Matt is the way in which he just speaks about everything that could go wrong. He says, I could tear apart a lawnmower, but I can't figure out these computers. So anyway, and then also just a bit later today around noon, I think, uh, Pacific time, my friend Amber Cross will be, um, Amber Cross will be singing and, um, She's a, she is a, 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 such a smart songwriter and a very spiritual person. Her father uh, was, is a minister. So uh, 
um, a great person to hear on a Sunday, on Easter Sunday. So I'll just sing one more song for you here um, about Papa Avery and the sun. It's not the right key. I think I'll do that in a different key. <laughs> They call me from the deep underground. I am at peace. The noise surrounds me. Engines turn. I set to work in my pickish shore. Some men they see me and think I'm poor. My clothes are, my face is dirty and my clothes are warm. I have my work and I have a home. He's in my garden, honey, on the I have my honor, I have my wage, I have my pick and I have my spade. All my family's gone to the cold. I am a miner, have a miner soul. Some men Easter. Oh, hi, sister. That's my sister. <laughs>